Renowned author Dr. Zakes Ndaz We Shall Sing for the Fatherland will be staged at the Soweto Theatre later this month. Written in the 1970s, the play is about veteran soldiers who return to a rehabilitated and civilized society which ignores their existence and struggle for liberation. The play delves into the problems of the post-apartheid system and post-colonial governments on the African continent and explores themes such as betrayal and condemnation of political and social practices, further warning on the continued optimism by South Africans and their faith in African leaders. We are now joined in studio by Dr. Ndai. It's a great pleasure to have you with us this morning and thank you very much for your time, sir. It's my pleasure. Is it safe to say that this offering was somewhat or is somewhat um, prophetic, especially when you take a look at uh, present day Africa in 2023? Maybe let's go back to the time when you wrote the book and you can tell us about your observations. Well, uh, I, I wrote the, this play in the very late 60s, uh, 69 or so, although it was first performed in the mid-70s. Um, and in this play, I was looking forward, looking to this period of, of independence. I'm looking at South Africa after liberation, after the struggle and so on. And um, I'm looking at the political class that has taken over and is enjoying the fruits of, of, of liberation and has forgotten the actual foot soldiers who fought for that freedom. So what we see on stage then are those foot soldiers suffering, staying in a park uh, somewhere um, because they've been betrayed by by their leaders. Yes, you are correct uh, when you say the play was prophetic, although I didn't know that when I was writing it. <laughs> you see, oh, wow. yes, I was not trying to be a prophet or anything like that. I was just looking, you know, at what had happened elsewhere. Remember when I wrote this play, there were many other countries that had had their freedom already. And to me, I didn't think that it would be different. I saw betrayal elsewhere, and I imagine that even in my country, in South Africa, there will be similar betrayal. Yeah. But of course, when people see the play now or, or read it, they say, oh, he was being prophetic, you see. Because it portrays, in fact, that is wh why it is one of my most performed plays after 1994. Up to this day, somewhere in, in, in the world, somebody is, 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 is doing that play. Because people feel that it is relevant to these times, even though it was written more than 30, or even 40 years ago. Mm. Yeah. We come to... 2023 and when you speak of betrayal there's also a conversation um, in South Africa that um, some sectors of society are having about the exiles or the exiles the people who left South Africa and the people who stayed um, mm -hmm. in South Africa when you speak of the material conditions um, that you 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 had in your mind at the time especially seeing how other liberation movements in which direction they were going in uh, people who were sleeping in the parks um, etc in present day South Africa what is your observation, especially when we stick to the theme of betrayal? Well, I mean, uh, it is obvious that, that, that uh, betrayal, you know, has happened. We have failed, and I include myself when I say we, even though I was never part of the ruling elite, but I was part of the liberation movement. You see. I'm one of those who fought for the freedom that we are supposed to be enjoying today. And those who betray us are people of my generation. So that's why I include myself there, you see. We, we betrayed our people. I mean, it is obvious, you know. What is happening today in South Africa is not anything even I 
who wrote We Shall Save for the Fatherland envisaged We Shall Save for the Fatherland betrayal there is very mild compared to what has happened uh, today because what we did of course was to focus on our own personal accumulation of wealth and neglected to do the things that are supposed to sustain the country. We neglected our roles as the governors of, of the country. That's why today everything is rotting. Everything, the roads are rotting, the electricity, the water, and everything because of neglect. And why did we neglect those things? Because we focused on accumulation. Hmm. That admission doesn't come easily. Um, you take a look at uh, the situation that played itself out in Marshalltown, um, and uh, you take a look at perhaps some of the utterances that we hear from the highest echelons where we are reminded that this is a country that was under apartheid, and still today we are under the stronghold of apartheid without the admissions of some of the failures or the unfinished projects um, that... Um, at the highest echelons have not taken place. What do you perceive is the resistance? Well, of course, you know, politicians will always be politicians, you see. Elections are coming, and of course, they need talking points. They have nothing else to sell except the failures. And then they have to account for those failures. And the best reason they can give is, is apartheid. <laughs> apartheid, which they defeated uh, more than 30 years ago or so, you see. It means that, of course, they've been so weak in, in, in the past 30 years that uh, apartheid overwhelmed them to the extent that they didn't do anything, you know, to, to counter it, you see. Um, so you can see that this is just an excuse, you know, it's just, oh, the dog ate my, my homework kind of, of, of excuse. It's a talking point. I think they talked among themselves that, well, let's blame apartheid. As South Africans' victims, perpetually, you take a look at the role, perhaps, in... Here's the question. What is the role of resistance art, resistance um, writing um, in... in and I guess reawakening um, the, the South African, are, are we perpetual victims? That's the saddest part because South Africans shouldn't be victims. You see. South Africans, yes, in many instances, we, 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 we are victims. We are victims of, of apartheid. Now we are victims of, of myself and my, my comrades. Um, but also, we are survivors. South Africans are survivors. If you go out there and see what young people are doing, young people don't, don't just sit around and wait for the government, you know. They don't just sit there, open their mouth, that, oh, some government manna will come from some government heaven. No. Many, many young people are doing things for themselves, especially in the arts, but in, in other areas as well, in business and so on. I can talk mostly about the arts because I participate mm -hmm. in the arts and in all my participation, I'm participating with young people who have come with their own initiatives, you see. And I get to ride with them there, you see. In other words, they are my leaders. In as far as, you know, the work we, we, we are doing as creators, uh, in, in the various fields of the art. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have the initi initiative, they have the drive, and they have creativity, you know. Yeah. When we take a look at the play, um, how closely are you working with uh, the directors of the play? And can we expect, without giving too much away, yeah. to see an incorporation of what we've seen over the past couple of months, if not years, um, in South Africa? Well, there I, will, I, I won't be able to answer that question, not because I don't want to, but because I don't know. Okay. I've not been working with them, you know. 
I do not even know, well, I know that um, uh, James Noble is the one who is producing it, he's the one who has permission from me to do it. But that's, that's as far as my involvement uh, okay. ends, only begins and ends, you see. They are directing it themselves, they are doing it, they are, if they are adapting it, because I hear something, it's an adaptation, well, I don't know. Uh, I will see it for the first time when I go there on the opening night. Okay, so you're going to be surprised, just like the rest of us. I'm going to be surprised, <laughs> maybe happy, or maybe embarrassed, I don't know. <laughs> Why would you be embarrassed? Well, you never know. Right. In, in many instances, you see, you find that um, you see something for the first time, you don't know what to expect, and you find that, ah, they've done such a wonderful job, or maybe not so wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What, how would you um, maybe reflect on your contribution um, to, to the arts, and that you mentioned that this play is probably being performed in other parts uh, of the world as well. What does that tell you? Have you thought about it? Well, I mean, it just tells me that I'm doing my job, you know, as a writer, because I write for the people, and not only in South Africa, but for the world. And fortunately, I mean, I've been writing for so many years, you know, still, and uh, my work is translated into more than 25 languages. You go to Estonia or Serbia, or I mean, you find my, 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 my work there, my novels in those languages in Korea, in uh, Turkey, or Turkiye, as it's called now. Mm -hmm. Not Turkiye, but Turkiye. Oh, Turkiye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. So, um, anyway, um, so, indeed, my work has been translated into all, all, all those languages because it resonates, I think, you know, with, with people of the world, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. um, don't ask me why it, it, it resonates. Perhaps you should ask those people sure. themselves, you see. Okay. I just do my best and, right. and, and create the art. Right. It so happens that well, people on the other side love it. Right. Mm. Where, where do you draw from um, to create? Because you, mm. you paint um, as well. So where do yes. you go to, 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 to give? What fills your cup, I guess? What fills my cup? Is you discussing with you now these things? The young people. I, I told you that I work a lot with with with, 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 with young people. For instance, um, I wrote an opera, and I'm working with two young composers who are in in, in their twenties. You see, and they come with such great ideas. You see, in their compositions, enhancing my libretto. You see. Without them, my libretto would just be an empty play, you see. So working with people like those, that's where I draw more and more. I, I, I drink from that well, in the same way that they think they drink from my well as well, you see. Many people say, oh, you kids are so lucky you're working with this guy. They don't know the one who's lucky is actually me working with these young people, you see. Because you learn every day, I guess, essentially. Oh, yes, of course. Mm. There's a lot that I learn from them. And a lot of inspiration that I get from them as well. Mm. In closing up the conversation, mm. um, we are marking the passing of Prince Mungo Sutu yes. mm. I just wanted maybe to get your reflections of your understanding of the man. Well, I mean, uh, my understanding of the man you have heard already that, oh, he was a complex person and so on. Well, who is not complex? Mm. We are human beings. We are all complex. So he had his complexities as well. I know him, you know, personally as somebody who was interested in the arts to the extent that he assisted me greatly when I was doing a project with another filmmaker called Zola Maseko, you know. Where we were stuck, he made it possible for us, through other sources, to get funding for, for that. You see, precisely because of the political connections that he had with my father, when he was still a member of the ANC Youth League, 
And my father was the president of the NC a youth league. He said, well, I'll do all that I can to make sure that this project succeeds. But also, of course, we cannot forget the other role, especially in the area of politics, you see, where some of the so-called complexities showed itself very well in those period, that period of black on black violence, mm. where, you know, his forces would come, you know, in the trains and mow down people and, and so on. You see, those, those inter and intra-party struggles that were happening during those days, you see, the mass democratic movement on one, on one side, the Inca town, the other, and the victims were the ordinary people. Passengers in the trains, ordinary people in places like we part going and so on, you know, where children suffered, women were raped and so on. So it's a legacy that history will not forget because, you see, and he was a role player there, as were other people who, I mean, the history will, will not forget that because history is based on facts rather than on sentiments. Mm. Is that, oh, now when you have passed away, we can't s talk facts or, you know, history does not play that game, you see. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much, Dr. Mda, for your time this morning and for honoring our invite and coming into the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you. you.